Hey, pass the salt. It's time. It's time. Hey, you, pass the salt. You know what, why it's disintegrating? Because we're jellyfish. <laughs> pass the salt, will you? Pass the salt. Pass the salt, amigo. It is time. It's time. I think they could give us a new name. I believe we are Evan Jellyfish. Hey, will you pass the salt? Pass the salt. We need salt over here. It's time for Pass the Salt. Pass but we like to share the gospel without any backbone to it, see? The views, opinions, and seemingly outrageous comments expressed in this program are based on the Holy Spirit leading of a man called Coach. I gotta ask you this out there, Christian America. It's time for Pass the Salt with a Coach, Dave Daubenmeyer. Hey, good Tuesday morning. Man, oh man, oh man, good day, good day to be alive. Every day is a good day to be alive. The world's crazy, isn't it? You know, I listened to, again, that intro, the world's on fire, the culture's disintegrating, hey, past the salt. Man, oh man, is it? I, I mean, you just stick your head out the window and you, I don't care which way you turn, there's something crazy going on. And I was thinking this morning, as I was, I was praying this morning and I was preparing for the show, thinking about everything that's going on. You know what, you know what, uh, <clears throat> we've lost all respect for evil we've lost all respect for it and i remember uh, maybe it was rush limbaugh or somebody somebody like him i can't remember exactly who it was i said one time that, that for most people history begins the day they were born 1952 november 26 1952 that was the day i was born and for us history is our life you know, and I look back over my life, and I remember, you know, it's 19, I remember my grand. I remember being in the room when my great grandfather died. I remember that as a young child. I, I remember, uh, vaguely remember uh, the first man, the the first man orbiting the Earth, John Glenn. I remember that because he was from Ohio. I remember that it was assassination of of JFK, and really once from that point on, 1963. You know, I was kind of cognizant of things that were going on, but really up, up to that point, not a whole lot going on in your life. It's really, really uh, had a whole lot of uh, information about or really any deep understanding. You go back and you think, you know, you, you trace on back through history and you go back through, golly, the Second World War. And I, you know, I uh, think of the, the greatest generation, those guys storming Oma, Omaha Beach and Normandy Beach and Pearl Harbor and golly, Death March Baton and all, all that. I was, wow, that was something to be alive during that time. I, I touched that generation. That was my dad's generation. And you go back and you think about the generation that lived through the Great Depression. That was my dad's generation. You go back and you touch into the, those who were in the First World War. And uh, that was my that was my great. That, my dad was born in 1919, so it was, you know it was almost his generation. Go back into the Spanish American War and go back to the uh, Civil War, back to the Revolutionary War. Just continue on back. And we stop and, and forget. Like I've, I saw a little video the other night of, of uh, storming of Omaha Beach. I don't know what it was about. I mean, I don't know what the video was or how I was watching it. And to think, you know, those guys were actually living that life at that time. I mean, those, those 16 and 17 year old guys, just, you know, they said they were seasick on those on those ships. Think about that. They got off to go storm Omaha Beach on. They were seasick when they did it. 17, 18, 19 year old guys. They went and did it. And they were living their life right then. They, right, right that, spirit, that period of time, that's when they were living. As we as we go going back, for most of us, history and life is is what, what what's the Bible say? Seventy six years, seventy five, seventy six years. That's it. For most of us, we we run our race and then we move on and we're out of it. And the whole time that we look at what's been going on, I'm heading somewhere this morning. Stay with me. Uh, we have we have lost all respect for evil. All respect from the days of. Uh, uh, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God has suffered violence and violent men take it by force. And, you know, there was time here before John the Baptist even showed up. He says from the days of John the Baptist until now, Jesus said that. But there was time before John the Baptist. There was Jeremiah and Ezekiel and go back to, to Moses. And there was time even, even be, before that to think how organized, how organized evil has been on this earth. And you, you talk about a long run or a long march through the institution. You have to tip your cap to the devil. Man, he's built a team. Guys, he built a team. He has built a team. And for most of us, our Christianity has to do with only our life. 
I'm alive now. I'm going to be alive another 20 years, and then I'm going to go to heaven. And, oh, well, that's how we live our lives, for most of us. And ha having really no, no understanding of the tag team hand, no understanding that if I, I'm running the last lap of the race, no real understanding or appreciation for the guys who ran the, race, the lap before me. Really don't. We don't really view our faith. We don't really view America. We don't really view Christianity as a tag team handoff. I was thinking about that uh, when I was on that show a couple, was it a week ago, two weeks ago, and I was on that show six on one at, at uh, Radio Underland or whatever it was. That guy was complaining about the Native American Indians. They ran their race, man. They ran their race. And who knows why we, we, why the white man came in and conquered them, but those Indians, they ran their race. Oh, are we running ours? Really? Are we running ours? And do we have any idea, as we run our race, that, that, how organized the enemy is? I, just, I, I, don't, I don't think we do. I was listening to a, I went for, went for my afternoon stroll yesterday. I'm so dedicated, I took an umbrella with me. It was raining cats and dogs. I waited as long as I possibly could. Went out last night about. 5 o'clock, 5.30 maybe, rain coming down. It's all the most unbelievable rainbow of my life, by the way, last night, coming back. I was listening to Sheila Zelensky and uh, Mark Taylor. They did a show. Pretty powerful. About the time, time in which we live and evil influences. And our, our, what did Jesus mean when he said, all power is given unto me, both in heaven and earth? What did he mean? I'm going to pause and we'll let you think about that in a second. What do you mean? All power is given unto me. But, uh, Jared, go, go, go. That's Matthew 28, I think it is. Isn't it 28, fellas? Matthew 28. I got someplace I want to head this morning, but the Holy Spirit just tapped me on the shoulder, so I'm, I'm listening to it here in a second. Bear with me. <clears throat> and Jesus came and spake unto them, said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What's that mean? Hey, boys and girls, that's been 2,000 years. And here we wake up in 2018. And you have to even ask ourselves, sometimes we even ask ourselves in the last 2018 years, has was, the devil advanced his cause more than Christ has advanced his? Have the devil's kids? See, the devil's kids, the devil's kids advance the devil's cause just by living because an unregenerated man's on the devil's team. But see, we, we don't go deep enough. We don't go deep enough to understand that there are not just those who are on the devil's team, but the scripture says workers of iniquity. Workers. Those who are actively working to overthrow and undermine everything that's good. We have no respect for the, our enemy. We have no respect for our enemy. And we have no respect for our power. Dave. Yes. Well, I want to just to quickly take you back to Matthew 11, where you, you talked and read. But, you know, when you read that verse that, that Jesus said, he's, you know, that and it is taken by force. You know, if you really if you really sit there for a few minutes, one so seldom taught. But where did all this passive Christianity come from when you read a verse like this? Red lettered have been forcibly taken, advancing. How did we go from a, 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 a scripture, a lesson like that, to this passiveness? You know, there's not even, there's <clears throat> not even a little Can I tell you? I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you very quickly and very easily, Roger. Affluence. As we became more and more affluent, life became softer and softer and softer. And we think about the greatest generation, those guys who stormed o Omaha Beach. Could we find a group that would do that today? A whole, it was a whole generation, guys. There, there was a whole generation that stormed, stormed those beaches. Now, they didn't all go, but everybody was behind that effort. Everybody was. And you look, at the, you look at the world today, divide and conquer, where we are, right? Divide and conquer. And the, the job of the enemy is to divide us. And I was thinking, Jared, as you were pulling that up there, put, stick that back up there. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God has suffered. 
uh, violence and violent men take it by force. No, Jared, the other thing he had, it, just had it up there. It says stupidity is more dangerous enemy of good than malice. Pause on that a second. Stupidity is a more dangerous enemy of the good than malice. Stupidity. One may protest against evil. It can be exposed and need be prevented by use of force, as Roger was talking about. Evil always carries within itself the germ of its own subversion. If that leaves behind in human beings at least a sense of unease, but against stupidity, we're, we're defenseless. Neither protest nor the use of force accomplish anything here. Reason falls on deaf ears. Facts that contradict one's prejudgment simply need not be believed. In such moments, the stupid person even becomes critical. When facts are irrefutable, they're just pushed aside as inconsequential, as incidental. And all of this, a stupid person, in contrast to the evil one, is utterly self-satisfied and being easily irritated, becomes dangerous by going on the attack. For that reason, greater caution is called for than with the use of a mal malicious person. Never again will we try to persuade the stupid person with reason. Or it is senseless and dangerous. Boy, is that a that is a powerful, powerful statement. I'm I'm I, I want to weave into something right now. On. Stupidity. We are so stupid to think that a Supreme Court justice, a guy can't be a Supreme Court justice because of something he did when he was 17 years old. That is utter stupidity. But yet stupidity is ruling the day. Ruling the day. And this is see the when are we going to wake up and be smart enough to do a scouting report and see how the devil always uses the same playbook? Uh, can anybody say Clarence Thomas? Uh, duh. Can anybody say Judge Roy Moore? Uh, duh. And now here it is, Kavanaugh. Everyone talking about the seriousness of the charge. 35 years ago? 17 years old? Are you serious? It's stupid. It's stupidity. It's stupidity. But see, stupidity cannot be successful unless those of us who know better allow stupidity to reign. There should be no credibility. I'm, I'm just, my perspective, zero credibility given to this accuser. Zero. Zero. But see, evil's smart enough to figure out that they've got us bamboozled. We, on our team, we're bamboozled. And remember Saul Linsky's rules? Make them live up to their own standards. So now you hear conservatives everywhere talking about, well, we must take it seriously. We must take it seriously. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Hey, Coach. Yes. Hey, Jared. Yeah. Hang on a second, Larry. Jared, go to Webster's and look up uh, uh, force, F-O-R-S-C-E. Go ahead, Larry. You know, um, you started off, you said we don't respect evil, and, and, and you're absolutely correct. But I just felt in my spirit there were some folks within your hearing that, that heard you say that. and you said, Well, I'm not going to give the devil any do. I'm not going to respect him and what he does. Well, you better. And cool. It's biblical. <laughs> it's biblical uh, 1 Peter 2.17. Honor all men, all men, and that's those evil ones too. And the honor is not set them up on a pedestal. It's recognize them for who they are. And, right. And in James 4, 17, uh, those who know to do good and don't do it, to them it is sin. So mm. if you're not recognizing evil for evil so you can identify it and know what to do to combat it, then if you know to do something and you're not doing it, guess what? You're sin. Amen. Amen. The force is, according to Webster, is the strength, active power, vigor, might, energy that may be exerted. That See, they've convinced us force is always physical, and it isn't. It is not always physical. The physical property in a body which may produce action or motion in another body or may counteract such motion. By the force of the muscle, we raise a weight or resist an assault. Momentum is the quantity of power produced by emotion or the action of one body on another. 
as the force. So we used to teach our football guys fight pressure. When we had on a football field, if the guy's trying to take you left, don't go left. Don't go left. Go right. Don't fight pressure. That which causes an operational or more. Oh, Roger, how about this one? Force is that which causes an operational or moral effect. Strength, energy as the force of the mind, will or understanding. Violence, power exerted against will or consent. Compulsory power. Let conquerors consider that force alone can keep what force has obtained. Strength, moral power to convince the mind. Moral power to convince the mind. Uh, virtue, efficacy. No presumption or hypotheses can be of force enough to overthrow constant experience. Validity, power to bind or hold. The conditions of a covenant are not fulfilled. The contract is of no force. Wow, strength. You go on and on and on and on. So all power has been given unto the, to us through the Lord. We don't respect the enemy, and that's why we end up with a uh, 35-year-old allegation by what somebody did when they were 17 years old. Amen, Coach. You got a sec? Yeah. This is time. The timing of this just exploded in my head. I'm thinking about what Larry said about the uh, I-40 and the flood. If you're on the first of all, when a flood comes, you don't have to do anything, and you're swept away, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you have to fight to get to the riverbank. You hmm. have to fight. So. We don't respect water either, Coach. We don't respect floods. We don't respect evil. Nature. And we're, we're fighting to stay on the riverbank, trying not to get swept away, and, and we have to keep trying. And I think that that's a good analogy for Christianity. You have to do nothing to be swept away by Satan and be a part of his plan. Boy, that's good, Mark. Yeah, right? And You, you, just, can't, you, you, can't, just pray, you can't just pray against the water, can you? No, no. And how look, we're on the riverbank. We see people going by. That's the part that's convicting me. What do you do when you see somebody in the flood getting swept by? What do you do? Do you film it with your camera? Mm. What do we do as Christians? You know, I mean, and, and we're seeing it everywhere. And it's a good example of what Satan's doing. He's sweeping everybody away and they're all amongst one another and they don't have a reference for evil because they're in it. And, and it's <laughs> oh, boy. Going, why can't people see that there's a waterfall? And, and they don't know. And, and here we are. So I just thought I'd share that. No, man, Mark, that is a, that is a great ana analogy. And Larry, share with the folks what you shared with us about the road closures. I, I, uh, down, Larry's down in, in that flood area. Now, folks, I want you to think about this. Mark just made an unbelievably valid point. You don't have to do anything, and the water's coming in. You don't have to do anything. It will, it will come in, and it will seek its height, and you can sit on your couch and not do anything about it, and that flood is coming in. That water's coming in. So, uh, folks, listen. Evil's coming in. It is coming in. It is coming in. And, and you can sit on your couch and watch it. You can sit on your couch and <clears throat> pray against it. You can sit on your couch and analyze it. But the only way that the evil is going to be stopped is there has to come a resistance. Larry, what were the statistics on those road closures from really nothing more than people just sitting around and not doing anything? Not that they could do anything. Don't miss the point. What was the flood of evil down there, Larry? I'm going <coughs> back to that uh, website <coughs> now. Uh, it's, my computer is a little slow. It was basically from Sunday until yesterday. Uh, it went from 100 in eastern North Carolina. It went from 180 some roads closed on Sunday to 380 some roads closed as of six o'clock last night, and that's considered major thoroughfares or primary these, roadways. These, aren't, these just on back roads beside some river. These are major thoroughfares. 300 and what, Larry? 384, I think it was, and when you include all the back roads, one th over 1,200 roads are closed because of flooding in eastern North Carolina. Hey, Mark, what did the people do? How did those floods get there? Did the people do something to call those floods to come in there? No. They did nothing. 
No, and they did, and a lot of people stayed there, right? A lot of people didn't yeah. get out. They didn't act. They didn't <clears throat> move their feet. You know, they didn't grab someone and take with them. You know, that's what they didn't do. Larry, part or uh, Mark, help me out here, but they probably sat there and waited for somebody to come and evacuate them. Hey, Coach George. Okay, so so when we the people are ambivalent and apathetic, <clears throat> then you know what we vote leaders who are ambivalent and apathetic. When the enemy, and you know what? Like Hang on, George. When the enemy comes like comes in like a flood, look that up, Jared. Keep going, George. So so anyway, when our so when we become apathetic as a people, we elect leaders that are apathetic because since we don't care, they're not going to care. They're not going to fight. That you know what our leaders think about it. They're fighting for what we the people are fighting for, and we're not fighting. So therefore, they're not <laughs> fighting. And ultimately, being ambivalent makes us stupid. So uh, 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 Diane Feinstein's fighting for her God. She is fighting for her God, buddy. Let there be no doubt about it. She's fighting. Hey, coach. Says, says, hang on a second. It says Isaiah 59, 1, 59, 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is going to do something. Wow. What he's going to do is lift he's up a standard. You. That's right. He ain't going to evacuate you. He's, yeah. Coach, he's going to lift up a standard. And lifting up a standard is holding that, that, that guide on or holding that banner high in front of the army and marching forward to defeat the foe. I'm getting goosebumps, man. Is anybody, is it, anybody picking, down what we're laying, picking up what we're laying down here? Do you understand the significance? Of what, do you understand the spiritual? Do you understand this? You, you understand what, what the Lord's shown us, and and let, what do we hear? What do we hear all the time? Well, people don't respect the water; they don't respect the one. Yeah, we don't. We don't respect evil. We don't respect it because we don't respect it. We're surprised when it hits. Well, the, surprised. Dave, yeah. Dave, the teaching uh -huh. word force this morning is pretty powerful. Yes. We've allowed. We've allowed the culture. To say, well, Christians, you, you don't forcefully, you know, and, and we've allowed people to say that's a physical action when it might be going to a city council meeting and speaking up. Amen. Jared, go to go back to Webster and look up power, power, because all power has been given unto him. We just read that, didn't we? All power has been given unto me, both in heaven and earth. Right. In a philosophical sense, the faculty of doing or performing anything, the faculty of moving or producing a change in something, the ability or strength a man rises his hand by his own power or by power moves from the will. From the, another body, the exertion of power proceeds from the will. Wow. The exertion of power proceeds from the will. And in strictness, no being destitute of will or intelligence can exert Power, power in man is active or speculative. Active power is that which moves the body. Speculative power is that by which we see, judge, remember, or in general by which we think. Power must, may exist without exertion. We have power to speak when we are silent. Power has been distinguished also into active and passive. The power of doing or moving and the power of receiving impressions or of suffering in strictness passive power is an absurdity in terms to say that gold has power to be melted is improper language yet for want of a more appropriate word power is often used in a passive sense and is considered as twofold vis-a-vis -vis as of able to make or able to receive any change power is force animal strength has the power of the arm Force is strength. Energy is the power of the mind, of the imagination, of fancy. Power is the faculty of the mind as manifested by a particular mode of operation as the power of thinking. Power is the ability, the natural, moral. We say a man has the power of doing good. His property gives him power. Well, he has the power to persuade others to do good. What is not in his power, the moral power of a man is also his power of judging or discerning. This is unbelievable, isn't it? 
And it's power and unity, too. Power and unity. Yes, yeah, because when I used to be a part of the Duck Army, I tell you, we were more unified than the Christians. It, it floored me when I got saved how, uh, how, un, how we are not together as one body, and that's a force and power in itself. Oh, my goodness. Huh? Which I said, Diane, she, she's serving her Lord, man. She's serving her Lord. Not only, not only is the Army more unified than the body of Christ, I tell you what, the Masons are more unified than the body of Christ. The yeah. Lions Club is more unified than the body of Christ. The, you just go down the list, the body of Christ is lagging up the tail end of getting unified the way we're supposed to be. Jared? <laughs> the, on the unity side of things, the look at the NFL. The NFL, now there's all these empty seats, right? There's ha ha these... They're half empty because of the ridiculous anti-American behavior, right? But that it shows what they're not unified, right? The the fans are no longer unified around NFL. It's and now it's just going to continue. It's going to con accelerate. It's going to de deteriorate, right? Because they're not you, the fans are not unified around their sport any longer. So we believe. Help me out here. Christians believe. God said, I set before you this day life and death, blessing and cursing. <laughs> Choose life. And so we know exactly what God's plan and his order is. His plan and order is, somebody help me here, life. Hey, Coach. Life. I, I like hang, on, hang, hang, hang on just one second, just one second. And the devil's plan is death. And which one is actively working the plan more? Which side? Go ahead, Glenn. Yeah, I, I like what Mark said. Uh, I, I like the analogy he made, and, and it reminded me of something that uh, Flip Benham said, and uh, it, it was so uh, timely and, and characterized the, the Christian church in the day in which we live. I, I wrote it down, and let me, let me just re take a minute and read it. Uh, there was a time when the church was very powerful in the time when early Christians rejoiced at being deemed worthy to suffer for what they believed. In those days, the church was not merely a thermo thermometer that recorded the ideas and principles of power, popular opinion. It was a thermostat that transformed the mor mores of society. Whenever the early stop Christians... Stop there a second, Glenn. Stop, Glenn, stop there. See, we are, it went from being a thermometer to the thermostat, from a thermostat to being a thermometer. What a, what a picture that is. It went from being the one oh, who determined yeah. the temperature to those who just simply measured it. Go ahead, Glenn. Whenever oh. the early Christians entered a town, the people in power became disturbed and immediately sought to convict the Christians for being disturbers of the peace and outside agitators. But the Christians pressed on in the conviction that they were a colony of heaven called to obey God rather than man. Small in number, they were big in commitment. They were mm. too God-intoxicated to be uh, astronomically intimidated. By their effort mm. and example, they, they brought an end to such ancient evils as infanticide and gladiatorial contest. Things are different now. So often the contemporary church is weak, an ineffectual voice with an uncertain sound. So often it is an arch defender of the status quo. Far from wow. being disturbed by the presence of the church, the power structure of the average community is consoled by the church's silent and often vo even vocal sanction of the things as they are. That was written by Martin Luther King from the Birmingham jail in 1963. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, Chad, I know Chad's out there, and I'm, I was thinking about you this morning, Chad, not specifically to you. I was thinking about law enforcement, power, and to look around at how much lawlessness there is in America, how much lawlessness there is in those who are supposed to be enforcing the law, how much lawlessness there is in those who are supposed to be defending our liberty, how much lawlessness there is. And why is there lawlessness? Because we who follow the lawgiver have been passive and have allowed, we know this, right? 
nature abhors a vacuum. So if the church retreats, evil advances. It's flood well, water. Who's had more power? Hugh Hefner or Billy Graham? Mm -hmm. And why? 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, wow, I don't know how I got on this this morning. Well, this Dave, is part of it, I'm heavy. just saying, that, uh, that part of the problem, well, the whole problem is, well, we've gone to this before, I think, two weeks ago about this, but it's a, the cops are the same as the preachers. It's because we have sat back and let them handle things. Right. Instead of taking our own authority and handling our own business. Because we <laughs> might get hurt or we might hurt someone's feelings. Well, amen, Chad. And because uh, I have up on my screen today, I was going to use Ezekiel 22, which, by the way, Chad was Chad talked from when we were down in Texas. Zeke, I'm going to use it for tomorrow, Jared. I'm going to come in. I'm going to crack crack this thing open because it's critical. Criti See, hey, guys and girls, we've neglected our responsibility. And now we're surrounded by floodwaters. And because we're surrounded by floodwaters, what's our hope? Evacuation. We get out of here. If that Cajun Navy just shows up and gets us out of here, then we'll wait for FEMA and Red Cross. They'll all come in and they'll clean it all up, and then we'll come back and we'll start all over again with this new clean. Somebody say amen. That's where we are. Amen. Yeah. Coach, it's amazing. We probably all can relate to this. You know, there's times I, I pull weeds out of our, our front garden bed, and it'll be amazing. The next day I'll come out, and there's weeds that have grown up in one day. They're and, you know, the analogy, the analogy is this. It takes no work for weeds to come up, bad things mm. to come up, but it takes a lot of work and diligence on behalf of we, the people, and the church to keep those weeds out. It's, it's never ending. It's and, never. And, and, we've, and, and we have neglected it. Yeah. Individ individually coach, we, uh, we, we basically have to rely on Christ and people aren't doing that. They're just not doing it. And I think it's like, isn't that the core difference between liberals and conservatives is the ability to take care of your own self, take care of your own stuff not rely on people to come rescue you and to get out, you know, whatever. But people just sit there and they wait because, well, a lot of people justify, they say, well, we got no, nothing else. We got no one or, or we got nothing to do. We got no truck. We, we can't move. We're stuck. But are they stuck? You know, look what the Christians went through for, for, you know, all through history. They weren't stuck. No. They got fit, you know? Hey, Mark. Yes, sir. You just had a mic drop moment there. You know, individually, individually, most mm -hmm. Christians, even those true Christians, are relying on Christ. Now, what they're relying on Christ to do is for Christ to do the actions. They're not right. relying on Christ to provide leadership for what you're supposed to do. Right. Well, he already gave us the power, right? He already gave us the power to do it. And we're refusing the power. We're refusing it. And why are we refusing it? Because of the comforts of life. It comes back to the affluence. Nobody wants to give up the see if hey guys, if we were living a life where we were being constantly treading that treading that water, that water is up to our neck and we were constantly treading our the water, we wouldn't love our lives so much, would we? We'd be willing to at some point we would say, That's an, I ain't putting up with this any longer. I'm either getting out of this I'm either getting out or I'm going to under. And see, we want to just tread water. Because we want that Cajun army, the Cajun Navy, <clears throat> to come by and rescue us. And see, we say, well, <clears throat> excuse me, well, it's not really my responsibility. And, and you know, the government, will, uh, oh, my goodness. Well, excuse Dave, coach, also, I, what, 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 that, what was that, John the Baptist called when he engaged the culture? How did, what was John <clears throat> the Baptist's reward? No yeah. one is greater. That's right. Got his head, well, I got his head cut off. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Speaking of responsibility and doing our part, um, in regards to the November 3rd event, um, I have booked um, one speaker and negotiating with another, uh, and also uh, just waiting on the venue. Um, if, 
you know, to be all sorted out. Um, and mm-hmm. I guess you can you can call me on that so we can um, yeah. secure that. So that, you know, because this has been like since August 23rd, but I really like to get that secured because there's people who are coming from um, a, quite a distance to come here. Even people who cannot afford to come here cannot pay the gas, but they are coming here to tell their testimony mm-hmm. to to meet and greet because that's what they feel drawn to. We have to yeah. unite. Does it matter? I, I mean, I I'm not financially uh, secure at this point in my life. I was before, but I'm not now. But we are all called to do our, our duty and responsibility. And I am, no. follow, I am following the Holy Spirit's lead. This is not me. This, if it was me, I'd be on the beach right now. <laughs> but I am following the Holy Spirit. He is leading me every single day. It doesn't matter if I feel uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable talking right now, but he told me I need to speak. We need mm-hmm. to follow the Holy Spirit and act on it. Amen. Amen. And time is... Uh... There's a, there's an there's an urgency. There's an urgency. Now I'm going to say something. <clears throat> I've tried to I've tried to squash the Holy Spirit uh, three times already this morning. Okay. Now some of listen. I'm, okay, Lord, I'll say it. <clears throat> some of you are going to get mad at me. All right. When I was teaching school years ago, I taught special education. Both Michelle and I did. Slow learners is what they we called them. Slow, that's what they, they call them, called slow learners. Then it became, well, we started out as special ed, and then it became developmentally disabled, and then it became developmentally handicapped, and then it became, the, then, then we, we gave it some other term. But one of the greatest things that I always thought, I saw, I saw it in special education first, and now it's crept into regular education. In fact, it's crept into higher education as well. And there was this process called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness. And I'm going to say this. There are some of you watching right now who have learned helplessness. You are so helpless. <coughs> and you are sitting in a pile of crap and you don't even care. You want somebody to come along and pull you out of it. Ain't no different than those Na- Cajun Navy coming by and trying to pull you up out of the out of the flood that you're sitting in the middle of. I'm going to tell you what the Lord said to me yesterday, and I almost didn't say it today. Past Assault Ministries, we're doing a lot to help a lot of people. I'm going to tell you this. Some of the people that we're helping ain't giving us a dime. You haven't sent a dollar a month. You haven't sent 50 cents. You haven't sent a penny. Not one penny. And to me, that's the whole idea of the storehouse. Go there, Jared. That's Malachi, is it not? I'm telling you, the Lord told me to say it. I'm going to say it. We're helping people who ain't helped themselves. Haven't helped themselves. Throw me a raft. Bring me a plane. Malachi. Bring all the tithes. I ain't talking about tithes. I'm talking about the law of sowing and reaping. You plant what you, you reap what you plant. And no, I ain't some prosperity pastor. But I'm telling you this. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse that there may be money in my house. So that I can help people. But why is it the people who want to be helped never send a dime? Just struggling here, coach. I can't even hardly keep my shoes on. Well, pay your way out of it. We'll help you. What are you planting? Where are you planting? Boy, I felt that one. That's deep. That's deep. We're going to help everybody. Those of you who know behind the scenes knows why we help. I don't know if we ever tell people no. But I am so worn out by those who need help who ain't helping themselves. Amen, Coach. And I have a, a, a man who's going to tell his testimony. He lost everything, everything, his job, his family, everything. And he's still making it. He's not making any excuses. He's still no. making it. 
You can't be a Walmart greeter. You can't get up and walk down the street and get a job flipping hamburgers at McDonald's. Say, well, coach, if I do that, I'll lose my social security. Then lose it. Quit being so helpless. Yes. Amen. You were talking about, right? Responsibility. You are responsible for your life. You're res How come millionaires can lose everything? And then they're millionaires two years later. How come that's even possible? Because they don't give up. And they say, I'm responsible for this problem. And I'm going to fix it. Amen, Jer uh, Jeremy. And if Michelle, if Michelle would come on right now, we have this person that we help financially over and over and over. And I continually, every time I, every time the situation gets desperate and I get ready to help again, I ask myself, am I enabling them or am I helping them? Because I want to help. But hey, I'll coach. be on if I want to enable. Yeah, George. Yes. Coach, as a businessman, can, can, can I give just a, a real quick budgeting advice? Yeah, hang on a second, George. Okay. Hang on a second, George. Why is it all those who need help have cable TV? They can send $35 a month to the cable company. Can't send a dime. I'm talking a dime. I'm expecting to, to this week to receive from somebody 10 cents in the mail. Go ahead, George. Okay, Coach. Real, real simple. Sometimes we make this too complicated. This was shared with me many, many years ago, and we live by it. On one side of the sheet of paper, you put your income. You, you list it after you pay taxes. List what you net. All right? Then on the other side of the paper, you list all of your expenses, and you have to put down how many times what you buy at the convenience store, fast food places, like cable, TV, every single thing. And if the number on the right-hand side, if your expenses are more than your income, you have to do one of two things. Either you have to figure out how to get a second job or whatever, another business, create more income, or you need to cut back. And that means get rid of non-essentials. If people would do that, Coach, I'm telling you, you'd be amazed how much money, more money you'd have to send into past assault ministries. George, they can't do that because they're helpless. They're helpless. They're waiting for somebody to come by in a boat and pull them out. Hey, can and then I, here's the problem. I pull them out of the boat, and then they swim back home. Yeah, Mark. Can I bring attention to Galatians 5.21? Yes. And I think, what did Paul do about it? You know, he, he saw this, and he went and... Uh, he went into these cities and just had to keep telling them. And I think what, what caught me on this verse, I think it's a very popular verse, but I've always honed in on Paul getting frustrated, of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in the past. So he's been telling them about this over and over and over, and they don't listen. And I think that's the part of it that is repeating itself is, whenever all the spirituality and supernatural part of our faith falls into myth, people start to just submit to Satan. They believe that there is no supernatural and then somehow or another they follow his supernatural ways, but they yeah. don't believe it's supernatural. So right. they're losing the fact that there's a whole spiritual world. And I think it happened right here with Paul. And, and his, this is an illustration of him telling them that they are not going to inherit the kingdom of God if they keep floating along in the river with Satan. Amen, buddy. Amen. And, and so uh, he's warned them over and over and over and over and over. And they continue. Some of you, you are your own worst enemy. You have a learned helplessness. All right. Now, I'm going I'm to say this and then, I'm gonna, then I'm, I promise you I ain't going to say anything about it. Many of you watch this show every day, blessed by this show every day, and have never sent a dime. Not, not a dime. There's one more point, one more word in here I'd like to point out, and that is do. 
So mm. things that yep. do. do. So that means that's an action word. Mm. And those who do those things. In other yeah. words, this is about repentance. And I, I'm starting to dig into repentance a little bit because people don't turn. You know, they kind of linger at the edge of repentance and they they're saved, supposedly, but they kind of linger. And that's the difference right there. They do. They continue to do. And they do because of their will. They do because of their desire. They do because of their commitment to do. And Mark, I thought that's important. Mark, 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 there's an old fa old fa phrase we used to have, and I, I'm seeing it more and more and more. I see it here in the huddle. You know what that phrase was? Well, he ain't got any skin in the game. Right? It's like a guy goes to the game and watches the game. He ain't no skin in the game. Are you going to say something, Larry? Yeah, I was going to tell Mark, you know, that I think that's one of the reasons he's talking about repentance and, and changing. That's one of the re reasons repentance from dead works, and that's doing the things that lead to death. Repentance from dead works is the very first item mentioned in the foundational principles of the Christian life in Hebrews 6 1. Amen, and those amen. six simple things, if people would just go and learn and let the Spirit teach them on those sim six simple things. Virtually everything we cover in the huddle here is covered in that foundation. <clears throat> Amen. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this because the Lord's pressing me to say this. And I go, I don't, I, how do I make this sound like it's not about money? Okay. Some of you. So we, I go to, uh, it cost us probably, I'm guessing 1500 bucks at Chad's last weekend. We tried, to, we tried to help with those expenses. I'm talking flights, all that stuff. Other people came. I spoke to Rob Pugh last night. Uh, Rob, Rob's in here this morning. We're going to go, we're going to try to go up, up. We're going to try to go to Marshfield, Wisconsin, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and turn those communities upside down. Hey, Rob, neighborhood, what are the expenses on that? He's here, I think. Are you there, Rob? Maybe he could be driving and delivering stuff. Yeah, I'm here, Coach. I'm just brushing my teeth, actually. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what are the expenses? Ballpark figure on the expenses on that, Rob? To what, uh, to what you're trying to do with that? going to run me about uh, five, 6000 Who's Who's paying that? Basically, myself. Uh, Rusty has kicked <laughs> in a little bit. And uh, other than that, we're just uh, waiting on... Uh, so we so we want to win a we want to win a war without any finances to win the war. Yeah, it's not coming in right now. That's for sure. It's, it's not coming in. Okay. okay. And I, I would like to I, I would like to say something. Okay. Um, no. First of all, my husband and I are not financially secure, but we are helping these speakers have a have a hotel and to stay here, pay for their gas. We we struggle with our with our finances, but the Lord brings us so we can help other people. Okay, we all need to come together, fulfill our promises. We all need to come together, and we need to to donate. We need to to have unity. Because I'm telling you, the left has so much money. Why? Because we are held to the feet. We we all have to contribute, and if we don't, we we do suffer. Trust me, career wise or otherwise. They have, that's why they have so much money because people are giving even when they feel they can't give they give so it's so amen. imperative amen <laughs> thank are, you are you yeah are you who thinks gonna pay for that should tanya have to pay for that should she have to pay for that i can't I, I just go on i'm we're not going under i'm not begging for money i'm trying to set you free i'm trying to help you see what a storehouse would look like hey coach <laughs> yeah yeah Hey, brother, listen, the scriptures are very clear. And of course, when I read Malachi, I'm not going to take the tithe and offering out of there because it is in the Bible. And it doesn't just talk about the tithe, which is an obedience thing, but it talks about the offering. Paul talks about God loves a cheerful giver. He also talks in the book of Ephesians. He says, God will not be mocked. A man who does not sow will not reap. There's no doubt about it. He who sows sparingly reaps sparingly. Jesus watched over the temple when the lady gave the widow's might said that she gave above all else because she gave out of what she did not possess. 
But the Amen. fact of the matter, then Jesus also said, where a man's treasure, so is his heart also. Follow mm-hmm. the money. I don't care whether it, it, it's a lot of money or a little bit of money. You might not be bringing in no money, but if, 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 if I'm not sowing into nothing, then my heart is that's a selfish heart. And brother, mm-hmm. I'm a giver. Man, I, I, I stay non-profitable because we just give it away. Everything we do at our church is non-profitable. But brother, that's the fact. All you got to do is open up their checkbook and see where is their money going. Amen. And Amen. that's where their heart's at. So I'm going to quit talking about it. If you're bothered by it, then that, you ought to look at your heart. Okay. You well, then you that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit right there, Coach. Right. Listen, I, I'm that's freely. I have no problem. I'll talk about it all day long. Do you know why? Because my, my conscience is clear of this. Once people that's begin that. to resist this, that's because God is trying to deal with them. It's Amen. like going to the doctor and getting a shot. Man, you want to squirm and you want to get out of the arms. You want to get out of that place. Hey, man, take your dose of the Holy Ghost and buck up to the table. <laughs> hey, so listen, David Arthur went through his surgery with flying colors yesterday. I think there's flying colors. Um, uh, he's doing well. He's In fact, he's in the queue here this morning. I'm probably going to have to cover his show for him today again because uh, – He's, you know, he'll be checking out doctors be coming in and out. He probably, he probably can't do it. So, uh, thank you for everybody prayed out to continue to pray. We can't, we got to, we got to cover David Arthur in prayer. Okay. We got to cover him. We got to cover him financially. Financially. There you go, coach. You asked for that. And man, instantly I went right online and sent him money. That's listen, yes. just get up there and do it. Yes. Come on. Some, well, that's, that's a whole different story. But anyway, uh, praise the Lord. He's going to, he thinks he's going to get to go home today and be back on his feet. And the surgery, uh, they think every, everything was good there. And it was, it was serious. But uh, praise the Lord that they, they got that all done. So, uh, listen, I want to make sure that I, I got I to hammer this because time just gets away from me. So I'm just telling you, time gets away from me. September 29th, Jared, pull that up on CoachDaveLive.com. We're having a gathering. Uh, Lo, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Maybe tomorrow you can be prepared to talk about it a little bit more. After what we just did down in, in Texas, we're doing it here in Ohio on the 29th. Now, if you go on our website, it's called a regional huddle in Bremen, Ohio, which is just west of Lancaster, Ohio. If you get on there and you look down there at all the stuff that Lowell has scheduled, 10 of his schedule Saturday, September 29th, it's all, it's all down there. It's all down there. Barbecue, fellowship. I mean, and Sunday morning, Bible study, uh, first aid, how to be prepped. Oh, well, why is that first aid? Just come. Will you Come on, man. Come and forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Even more as we see that day approaching. It's important that we do this. Then, and so mark that on your calendar. If you're within a neighboring state, get here. September 29th, you can camp out, you can bring sleeping bag. Okay. And then we're, we're heading to, yeah, I got a lot. I got, I see why Gary is always hammering me to talk more about the schedule. Uh, it's, it's, it's so important. And then, okay, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to connect dots. So then some guy says, coach, I would love to be able to come, but I don't have the finances to be able to come. I say, okay, hey, we'll help you. Come. We want you to be part of, we'll help you. I'll buy your gas. But see, it could be you buying their gas, not me. I'm just the I'm just the vehicle it flows through. Okay, guys, 754 already. What else are they? Oh, big news coming today. They're gonna release that FISA memo. And that's the one thing for the tinfoil hatters. That's the one thing I've been talking about. This is this is going to be earth shaking, I believe. Uh, we're gonna really get a good picture of exactly what happened. And I think we're going to see that this runs clear. It runs through Obama, for sure. And you do understand this, don't you, that what's going on with Kavanaugh right now is they are hoping to delay this past the election so that they have a Republican Senate. That's what they're trying to do. They're doing whatever they can. They're judge mooring Kavanaugh. And don't ever be deceived about this. There are some Republicans that don't want Kavanaugh in there either. Hey, hey, coach, I just this saw this morning that came across LifeSite News, which is a reputable news, that her eyewitness 
came out last night and said she's absolutely crazy. Now, <laughs> that, that's not going to be good for her. No, well, and not only that, Dale, how, did, how does, see, I, I, did you guys, oh, I wish I could find it. I had it to do over again. Uh, Clarence Thomas, it's the exact same thing. Clarence Thomas, remember, he called it a, this is 1991. He called it one, uh, 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 some type of lynching. Uh, I can't remember what it is. See, somebody had, to, somebody had to give this accusation credibility. Who's giving it credibility? You know, what I, you know what I think Kavanaugh ought to do? I think Kavanaugh ought to say, listen, okay. See, people get mad when I make a joke like this, okay? Kavanaugh ought to get five of his buddies and say, oh, oh yeah, yeah, we all slept with her that night. That's what they ought to say. She just laid there and just gave it away. That's what they ought to say, right? That's what the left would do. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, yeah, if I remember right, there were guys standing out the door waiting to get in there with her. She was just handing it out with can, like can. Well, and that's exactly what they do. Isn't the Saul Solinsky one of the things is, is accuse your enemy of the very thing you're doing? That's right. Make them, live up, make them live up to their own standards. And see, we let them get away from it again because why? They know there's no – look, we're bending over. The Republicans are bending over being – Oh, these are serious charges. What? Serious charges? This guy's been investigated by the FBI. How many times has he been through FBI background checks? What are you talking about? Oh, we don't want to look. Oh, see, Trump can't say anything about it because they'll say, what will they say? Well, yeah, of course, he's a womanizer too. Huh? See, that's why that's hypocrisy, right? That's what hypocrisy does. See, hypocrisy makes you powerless. You can't talk about being nice to women if you haven't been nice to women. It's hypocrisy. And the church, we're not hypocritical, but we're playing with a group of people who certainly are, and we don't ever call them on it. And, oh, well, golly. Somebody help me wrap it up. I got three minutes to go. Crazy time, crazy times, crazy times. Yeah, of course, why don't, why don't we just accuse, accuse back? Like, you, like you said, yeah, she slept with 20 guys. We got them all right here. We got 20 guys lined up who slept with her, too, back then. Yeah. That's right. So I'll throw this in. You got the workers of iniquity in the water, and you got the people on the bank throwing the life preservers out trying to rescue Christians that are in the water. Those right. are the Christians on the church pews in the churches, and we're trying to, I, again, a long time ago, I've, I've basically given up on the, the square box of a church and looked at it as a rescue mission for those few sheep that are actually saved on the pews, not getting fed. So we're busy throwing life preservers. And you got the workers of iniquity putting anchors on their ankles. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. They're in the water pulling on the people, keeping them ready to go down the, uh, the waterfall. Right. So, so get out of the water. <laughs> you know, do some work, swim, effort. If you're one armed, wave, let somebody help you something. But get, an, get out of the water. Get an inner tube. Get an inner tube. Get yeah, it. something. <laughs> it is, man. It's that same mentality, see? Same mentality. See, I, listen, Roger's got a lot, of, a lot of money. He'll pay for it. He's got a lot of money. What kind of mentality is that? <laughs> help yourself. Invest. Put some skin in the game. Ease. Increase I'm, your skill set. Increase your skill set. Increase Stuff your. Like that. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. So we hey, we we're here, to, we're here to help, baby. We're here to here to help, and we want to do everything we can to advance the kingdom of God. And <clears throat> why do we get nervous about talking about money? I'm trying to set you free. I'm trying to help you get free. God bless. Thank you, Lord, for David Arthur, and that he's healed and and sanctified and serving you lord and a witness to you we thank you for your faithfulness to him lord jesus we we apologize lord that we've allowed him to drift out on that lifeboat all by himself we confess that was wrong lord and we just pray that you would create in us a clean heart and renew within us the right spirit lord but the right spirit in us lord that everything's yours it's you. Our whole lives are yours. You're the king of the kings. You are the Lord of the lords. You are our Lord, not just our Savior, but our Lord, and help you to service, serve you in that manner. In Jesus' name, amen.
Bless y'all. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen.